killing me, Smalls. July, diplomatic security agent Eric Nordstrom asked to have a 16-person special support team stay on as extra security until mid-September. That request went unanswered. Affairs Bureau, the actual experts on Libya in the State Department. So, if there's no evidence for a video-inspired protest, then where'd the false narrative start? Started with you, Madam Secretary. At 10.08, on the night of the attack, you released this statement. Some have sought to justify the vicious behavior as a response to inflammatory material posted on the internet. At 10.08, with no evidence, at 10.08, before the attack is over, at 10.08, when Tyrone Woods and Glenn Doherty are still on the roof of the annex fighting for their lives, the official statement of the State Department blames a video. Why? During the day on September 11th, as you did mention, Congressman, there was a very large uh, protest against our embassy in Cairo. Protesters breached the walls. They tore down the uh, American flag. Uh, and it was of grave concern to us because the inflammatory video had been shown on Egyptian television, which has a broader uh, reach than just inside Egypt. And if you look at what I said, I referred to the video that night in a very specific way. I said, some have sought to justify the attack because of the video. I used those words deliberately not to ascribe a motive to every attacker, but as a warning to those across the region uh, that uh, there was no justification for further attacks. And in fact, uh, during the course of that week, uh, we had many attacks that were all about the video. We had people breaching the walls of our embassies in Tunis and Khartoum. We had people, Madam thankfully Secretary not Americans, dying Secretary at Clinton. Um, protests. But that's what was going on, Congressman. Secretary Clinton, I appreciate most of those attacks were after the attack on the uh, facility in, in Benghazi. You mentioned Cairo. It was interesting what else Ms. Uh, Ms. Newland said that day. She said, uh, if pressed by the press, if there's a connection between Cairo and Benghazi, she said this, there's no connection between the two. So here's what troubles me. Your experts knew the truth. Your spokesperson knew the truth. Greg Hicks knew the truth. But what troubles me more is I think you knew the truth. I want to show you a few things here. You're looking at an email you sent to your family. Here's what you said. At 11 o'clock that night, approximately one hour after you told the American people it was a video, you say to your family, two officers were, were killed today in Benghazi by an Al-Qaeda-like group. You tell. You tell the American people one thing, you tell your family an entirely different story. Also, on the night of the attack, you had a call with the president of Libya. Here's what you said to him. Ansar al-Sharia is claiming responsibility. It's interesting, Mr. Katala, one of the guys arrested and charged, actually belonged to that group. And finally, most significantly, the next day, within 24 hours, you had a conversation with the Egyptian Prime Minister. You told him this, we know the attack in Libya had nothing to do with the film. It was a planned attack, not a protest. Let me read that one more time. We know, not we think, not it might be, we know the attack in Libya had nothing to do with the film. It was a planned attack, not a protest. State Department experts knew the truth. You knew the truth, but that's not what the American people got. And again, the American people want to know why. Why didn't you tell the American people exactly what you told the Egyptian prime minister? 
Well, I think if you look at the statement that I made, I clearly said that it was an attack, and I also said that there were some who tried to justify Secretary it Clinton, on the call. basis on the basis of the video, Congressman. And I but, think but, it's but, but, real quick. Calling it an attack is like saying the sky's blue. Of course, it was an attack. Well, you know, I mean, we shortly, want to know the truth. This, the statement you sent out was a statement on Benghazi, and you say vicious behavior as a response to inflammatory material on the internet. If that's not pointing as the motive of being a video, I don't know what is. And that's certainly what, and that's certainly how the American people saw it. Well, well, Congressman, there was a lot of conflicting information that we were trying to make sense of. The situation was very fluid. It was fast moving. There was also a claim of. Fluid, it was fast moving. There was also a claim of responsibility by Ansar al Sharia. And when I talked to the Egyptian prime minister, I said that this was uh, a claim of responsibility by Ansar al-Sharia, by a, uh, a group that was affiliated or at least wanted to be affiliated with al-Qaeda. Sometime after that, the next, next day, early the next morning after that, on the 12th or 13th, they retracted their claim of responsibility. Madam Secretary. And I think if, if you look at what all of us were trying to do, and we were in a position, Congressman, of trying to make sense of a lot of incoming information and Madam watch the way the intelligence community tried to make sense of it. Madam Secretary. And so all I there can was say not is nobody... There was not conflicting information the day of the attack because your press secretary said, if pressed, there's no connection between Cairo and Benghazi. It was clear. You're the ones who muddied it up, not the, not the information. Well, there's no connection. Here's what, here's what I think that, here's what I think's going on. Here's what I think's going on. Let me show you one more slide. Again, this is from Victoria Nuland, your press person. She says to Jake Sullivan, Philippe Rhinus, subject line reads this, Romney's statement on Libya. Email says, this is what Ben was talking about. I assume Ben is the now somewhat famous Ben Rhodes author of the Talking Points memo. This email is at 1035, 27 minutes after your 1008 statement. 27 minutes after you've told everyone, it's a video, while Americans are still fighting because the attack's still going on, your top people are talking politics. Seems to me that night you had three options, Secretary. You could tell the truth, like you did with your family, like you did with the Libyan president, like you did with the Egyptian prime minister, tell them it was a terrorist attack. You could say, you know what, we're not quite sure. Don't, don't really know for sure. I don't, I don't think the evidence is there. I think it's all in the first one, but you could have done that. But you picked a third option. You picked the video narrative. You picked the one with no evidence, and you did it because Libya was supposed to be, as Mr. Roskin pointed out, this great success story for the Obama White House and the Clinton State Department. And a key campaign theme that year was GM's alive, bin Laden's dead, Al-Qaeda's on the run. And now you have a terrorist attack, and it's a terrorist attack in Libya, and it's just 56 days before an election. You can live with a protest about a video. That won't hurt you, but a terrorist attack will. So you can't be square with the American people. You tell your family it's a terrorist attack, but not the American people. You can tell the president of Libya it's a terrorist attack, but not the American people. And you can tell the Egyptian prime minister it's a terrorist attack, but you can't tell your own people the truth. Madam Secretary, Americans can live with the fact that good people sometimes give their lives for this country. They don't like it. They mourn for those families. They pray for those families, but they can live with it. But what they can't take, what they can't live with is when their government's not square with them. Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Stevens made repeated requests for more security. Guard booths and gates were added to the Benghazi compound as part of $100,000 in upgrades. But they still didn't have enough people. Only Libyan fighters regain control of the consulate and start searching for Ambassador Stevens and Sean Smith. When the attacks on the consulate and CIA annex finally end, the assault has lasted nearly eight hours. 30 Americans were saved, but four Americans are dead.